Hello everyone, welcome to Positron Plays Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. If you haven't played the original Shovel Knight, uh, first of all, you should. Uh, this is a free DLC, absolutely 100% free DLC for Shovel Knight. Introduces a new character, remake stages, new challenges, a whole bunch of interesting things. Uh, Shovel Knight was made by Yacht Club Games, obviously you can see at the bottom. It came out last year, originally, for pretty much everything. I think it's on just about every console and handheld at this point. Um, I'm playing this on PC. This was absolutely my favorite game last year and super, super excited to play the DLC. I've played a little bit of it. I played it originally at PAX East. I played uh, the first level at PAX East. They were doing a speedrun thing. Uh, I wonder if that's actually an option in the actual game. I'll have to see if that unlocks at some point. Uh, yeah, they're doing a speedrun thing and I actually got one of the better times. So I was kind of proud of myself. Um, yeah, so I thought I would play this Record it. I would definitely be playing as Plague Knight. If you haven't played the original, um, it's got a really good story, and there might be some story, story spoilers here, so you have been warned. But let's play as Plague Knight. We'll get an intro cutscene here. Uh, no, we will enter our name. Then we will get an intro cutscene. You can enter special names in here too. Uh, I know there's like a butt mode, changes words of like everything into butt. Um, I don't know if those work with the DLC, I imagine they do, but we're just gonna go standard here. Long ago, the lands were untamed and roamed by legendary adventurers. But villainy ran rampant, and in time, even the most stalwart heroes fell. In the absence of champions, the Enchantress and her Order of No Quarter swept into power. Unbeknownst to everyone, the maniacal alchemist Plague Knight had plans of his own. He sought nothing less than to concoct a potion of unlimited power. Draft so fiendishly potent that nothing he desired would be out of his reach. Each knight unknowingly guards a crucial ingredient. Now the collection must begin. I've left the volume up a little bit because this game has an Absolutely amazing soundtrack, and I'll make sure that comes through. Oh, the boss is on his way. We've got to get back to the lab fast. I don't want to get experimented on. <laughs> Just hold square to charge and bomb burst out of here. Come on, hurry up. So I won't be going for any speed records here at the start, just for the sake of uh, explaining mechanics. Ready? All right. So, uh... Plague Knight controls very, very differently than Shovel Knight. Uh, he's very slidey for one thing. His control is not nearly as precise. Instead of a shovel, he's got these bombs. We can be able to change those over time, but his big, big thing here is that he's got this boost. And he also has a double jump, and we can combo it together to do some crazy, crazy stuff. This DLC is pretty much all about that movement. Also something near with these collectible coins. You get the kind of thing of them as like red coins in Yoshi's Island. Um, except they're not hidden really. They are hidden, but they're not they don't look like other items essentially. But you can see already that the stages are remixed a little bit. Not entirely. The general layout is the same as the base game, but uh, every stage has some differences to accommodate for Plague Knight's abilities. I love this stage music. We still have treasure chests, and we'll find things in them. These are new potions. Health tonic. Full bag of tonics to upgrade your max health. Just open the menu, drink them down. So these work as temporary health boosts. You can also kind of float a bit while we're throwing bombs. So what we can do is we use one of these, 
and for every one we use, we get a temporary health boost. This actually give us health back, too. Uh, that will remain until we die. Oh, I actually missed one of those. There we go. I don't know if there's a secret here still. No. Uh, so the bombs are time delay to start. Oh, geez, I actually touched the spikes. <laughs> um, the bombs are just a good time to show off the potions are temporary. Um, yeah, the bombs are time delay. And, uh... But if they hit, like, a... Oh, I do want to show off something there, too. Um, oh, my goodness. This is, this is embarrassing. I'm trying to talk and play at the same time. It's not working out. I have to try to do some fancy maneuvering to make up for it. Um, yeah, so the bombs are time delayed, but if they hit, like, a breakable wall, they'll immediately explode. Uh, the thing I want to show off is that the charge time on your, like, your boost jump actually carries over between screen transitions. What this means is that uh, and there's actually a really cool little graphic they have, but it actually, you can use the time of the screen transition to charge your boost jump. And so you can do some kind of wild tricks where you boost and then go across and then boost and then go across and then boost, so on and so forth. You can boost indefinitely that way. It's kind of a neat thing. Uh, they basically just wanted to make sure it felt consistent and it's it's very cool that way. Actually, I got myself in a bit of a pickle there. Uh, you also do have some invincibility frames while you're boosting, which can be pretty helpful. The big thing about controlling Plague Knight is realizing that he, and I may occasionally call Plague Knight she, and that is mostly from playing Darkest Dungeon. So my apologies if I mix that up a little bit. Not that it really matters, to be honest. Um, but the big thing about controlling Plague Knight is essentially not to it's like kind of not to overextend. It's very easy to send yourself careening off into a pit um, as you get used to the controls. As you've seen me do with the spikes. Alright, so we'll kill these guys. Bombs will also explode immediately in contact with an enemy, too. Just a residual explosion you'll have to wait for otherwise. Oh, actually, I didn't realize I was going to hit the ceiling there. So a lot of the secret areas are still the same. I think you can still find hidden passages in a lot of the same locations. So if you played Shovel Knight before, um, which you have to have to unlock this, though there is a code to unlock Plague Knight right away. Um, but yeah, if you, if you remember where the layouts are of the levels previously, most of the secrets are in the same place. To an extent. We can see we just do a boost here to get to clear these out. Uh, you can also do, um, there we go, yeah. you can boost and then jump, or you can jump then boost. I think jump, double jump then boost is always superior, but certainly not a master at this yet, so not 100% on that. I'll have to say that the, uh, the control of Plague Knight, while it does take a little bit of getting used to, is super, super intuitive. Um, it really did not take me long to kind of get into the movement, the flow of it. Um, like I said, when I played it at PAX, you know, I got I got in the top 25 on the times, and it was only my first time playing, so it was, it was very, very intuitive. All right, this one's kind of a tricky one. I do this and then that. I do want to get that. Just to make sure. You can also do some crazy stuff with uh, boost jumping after traveling a long distance. Um, that gets a little scary, though, because your momentum gets kind of nuts. And you will eventually get um, different types of jumps and all sorts of things. So you can use the floating to your advantage there. So we have this new mechanical thing here. We break it open. We can climb inside. It's a cannon. Now it can be cannon, basically. That, uh, I really love the invincibility on that, uh, on the boost jump. It's super, super cool. You can do some really neat stuff with it like that. It also makes sure that when you're jumping and boosting, that you're not immediately taking damage if you're not entirely sure what you're doing. Also, I don't know if it's an intentional hint to Mega Man, but I really like that when you go to the top of the thing, the animation, get the animation stuck where they're climbing over, and that was kind of a thing in, like, Mega Man 2 and 3. Um, little animation court. Now we 
I got a coin here. Hit that checkpoint. Um, you can still break checkpoints if you want to. Uh, you can't do it in the first level, of course, but you can still break checkpoints for extra coins and things like that. I don't know how much of that I'll be doing just because I'm a little more prone to mistakes while I'm trying to talk over it. But uh, we'll see. Let's see how confident I get. That's actually a really bad place to be. Yep. Alright, let's. There we go. This one is deceptively tricky. I actually did it perfectly that time, just because landing where that bug is is a little sketchy at times. I don't know if there's a way to cancel out of a boost either once you've started holding. I don't think so. I know that you can kill your momentum by uh, j jumping um, afterwards, but I'm not sure if there's a way to totally cancel it. Well, if I let go and I'm holding down, it cancels it. I guess it, it is to an extent. I used that screen transition boost there. Almost got myself killed as a result, but it panned out. So we'll use money and such for upgrades, just like we did in the base game. But uh, we'll have to get to a town before we can do that. That was a little close. There was another kind of double jump there. Yeah, turkey. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Turkey in here? Yeah, there we go. And some potions, too. I saved those for now. Well... Uh, you know what, let's drink them. We'll get into the rest of these items and stuff like that when we get a little further on. The Black Knight. Listen to me, Magicist. I know you're aiding him in his quest for the ultimate potion. Also, I'm going to read out the text just because sometimes people are just listening to the game. But uh, I, you should really look at some of how this stuff is written. Just the animation and the text sounds so simple, but it's such a cool touch. Ultimate what? I haven't seen him since he fled to join the Order of No Quarter. Ah, chemical trickery. Can't fool me, I know he plans to use the potion to beguile you. Wait, me? What are you insinuating? Oh, someone's coming. No, it's the panicky pushover. Winning the Magistus heart worth betraying your allies. <laughs> what? Where in the world did you hear that? I like Nate's a little, uh, a little kooky. I know how you plan to gather ingredients. The only thing worse than a deranged alchemist is a traitor. Do what you will with the order, but none threaten the enchantress and live. All right, let's kick this guy's ass. So he has pretty much the same attacks that he had when you fought him as Shovel Knight, but we've got more tricks now, so we can kind of stay away from him a little easier. Um, but when we're on the ground, we're not nearly as fast as we used to be, so. It does require a little more precision to get him now. So there we can use that invincibility frame to cross over. I wonder if there's an achievement for killing him with like just boosts or something like that. I bet there is. I'm kind of stun lock him. There we go. Got him. So I don't think we get any dream sequences as his Pug Knight, which is a shame because that was some of the coolest stuff, but at the same time, there are a few other things. Let's go to the village. I'm sure they'll be happy to see us, right? Halt! No weapons allowed. Wait a minute. Let's just pretend I don't recognize you and you can go safely on your merry way. It doesn't have to get messy. Also, you notice when townsfolk will try to walk by, they'll get a little spooked. Don't show your creepy bird face around here again, freak. Now let's just go, let's just go in. Alt, maybe you didn't hear me through that mask. We already had this conversation, pal. You're not supposed to be here. Now get lost before I lose my patience. I was just boost on through. No. Look, buddy. Don't make me call for backup. I'll do it. Just take a hike, all right? I really want to go to town. 
Okay, now you're just pulling my pauldrons. I'm a busy guard. I don't have time for this. Can you just go? All right, let's just go. Oh, what's over here, though? Oh, hello, friend. Hey, Plague Knight. I'm still guarding your secret entrance, but I lost the key. Blocksmith should be here in a week or two. Maybe you could wait until then. Well, I don't know why my secret entrance has a whole bunch of explosive barrels around it, but we know what to do with those, right? I, oh, was that his house? Well, I guess I'm canceling the locksmith appointment. <sighs> this is the house I grew up in. I'm, I'm sorry? Kind of? Secret over here, isn't there? Yeah, musical scroll. Let's take a walk through under the town. <gasps> it's Shovel Knight! Oh, he's just coming to town. Well, at least he hasn't noticed us here. Mona, we have a big uh, problem on our hands. We've been found out. Oh, the Black Knight thing? Yeah, Magis has filled me in. Don't worry, your beak. That fool has nothing on us. Look, all we need to worry about is those final ingredients. We're stuck languishing here in obscurity until then. So Mona was in the original game, too. Um, I'm trying to remember what she did. I know she had a minigame, but... Apparently she's actually evil. Yes, the essence is. I shall pay our friend a little visit and, uh, <laughs> borrow them. Right, and while you're doing that, I'll keep researching ways to get more bang for our buck. Know what they say, the bigger the explosion, the better the alchemist. Yes, let's get to work. It's quite the, uh, fancy entrance there. Whoa, these lifts never cease to both amuse and nauseate. Truly a dizzying display of technology. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to the Potionarium. So what are we working on? So okay, we can shop, we can do research. So this is where we buy new ingredients for our, um, our abilities, basically. So every bomb that you throw has a case of powder and a fuse, and our burst also has different things that we can do with it. So the case, for example, we can get an arcing case, and throw it up in the air. Uh, powder uh, produces two wall climbing flames, or cascade powder produces waves of fire in both directions. You see though that these limit us to two or one bomb. And the fuse can have a long fuse as opposed to a short fuse, things like that. Uh, for now, I'm actually just gonna buy the float burst. Yep, and I'm probably gonna save the rest of my money. Um, because, fortunately, I do know... Oh, we can also do research. Research uh, is to unlock more things to buy, but we need 40 Cypher Coins first. Those are the green coins. Maybe some townsfolk coming through here, or, uh... Alchemist folk. Hi there. I always carry a full stock of health talks with me and quaff a couple on the first day of danger. New bomb combination can make all the difference in a difficult situation. So these guys are basically just walking hints. Mona really knows her stuff. Don't oh, forget our marker for secret areas. Cypher coins embedded in the walls. You can also take these guys out if you want. So that actually gives you a hint uh, that there are secret coins and such hidden right there. Minion, I picked up your special delivery. Want to take a look and settle the bill? I guess he's just a generic minion. I thought he actually had a name. So the special delivery is the bait bomb. This is the equivalent of the fishing pole that we would have as Shovel Knight. So yeah, we'll get that. Throws a uh, bomb that's kind of like a fish and runs across the ground. I just don't oh, hold up, Plague Knight. Black Knight tried to interrogate me, but I think I threw him off the trail. Whether it's business or personal, don't worry, your secrets are safe with me, Plague Knight. Anyway, yes, of course, uh, you'd like potions, wouldn't you? So we can buy health tonics, we can buy magic upgrades, we're not gonna buy anything right now. We have this goat guy. Ah, Plague Knight, my good friend, a moment of your time. Ah, how can I help you, Percy? I've run out of paper and I can't fit any more ballistic formula on my hoof. I'm in desperate need. You need glue as well, I know how we can make some. <laughs> Ooh, oh he's a horse, not a goat. 
Oh, why, thank you, but just the paper will do. And by the way, you're looking a bit forlorn lately. Maybe I'll repay your kindness with some love advice. We have this creepy thing down here. Oolong. Ah, everyone works so hard down here. Yes, and Oolong want to help. Can help, can make musics. I got tired, fell asleep, went awake, forgot almost all music. So sad, poor Oolong. I think very hard, maybe remember more music. Then I help, I help science. Alright, pal. So, he is our, uh... Kind of sound test guy. My ally, that's four sheets of paper you've brought me. 500 gold for each. Yeah, sure. What is this folly? Some sort of musical notation scribbled all over it on both sides. There's nowhere for me to write. Useless. Into the trash bin it goes. What a blockhead. So he'll toss those, and they get tossed into Oolong's head. He is very happy about it, and when that happens, um, he will unlock different music. This is different uh, music from the game. Alright. Um, I think we don't have any... Yeah, we need more paper. So, uh, we have 2,800 now, so I think I'll actually go buy a little more. Buy one more upgrade here. I'll buy, um, I can actually buy the fuse and the case. I do eventually want to buy everything, so we'll buy these for now. And I'll show these off before I end the video here. We'll probably do one or two stages per video, depending on how long they are. So, you can see now that we can change to lob casing. And that does this. We still get the uh, the jumping. What's actually interesting is no matter how many bombs you have to throw, you always have the three throw effect. Even if you can't throw any bombs, you'll just kind of flail wildly. This makes it so the jumping and floating is always consistent. Um, we can also make them a long fuse. Actually, that seems to work really well with the lob bombs because uh, more likely to get them to the ground. I like the bounce casing better. I don't know if I want the long or short, probably the long fuse, because if an enemy touches them, they're gonna blow up anyway. So we can also do the float burst. What that will do is that we will float. Then we can press down to come back to the ground. I'll probably start to use that for right now. Um, I'm kinda, I think, more partial to the original burst, um, but this lets you get to some places a little easier. And if we exit here, Come back out, we have two places to go. Can we go to King Knight or Spectre Knight? And we can also go to the Triple Palm, but there's nothing there just yet. Uh, but that, so that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you will join me for the rest of the series. Gonna play through the whole DLC. Pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Like the video if you click like. Wait, if you like the video, click like. Yes. I got that right this time. Anyway, thanks. See you soon.